welcome to this tutorial on how to get the most out of Wheela's Application Aware Infrastructure Performance Monitoring Tool. In this tutorial, we'll go over the various portions of the dashboard as well as multiple dynamic monitors and reporting capabilities. By the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know in order to utilize this solution to quickly diagnose performance issues and prevent future application disruptions. Let's first look at the dashboard that appears when you log into the Wheela portal. Note that this dashboard and all of their functionality is exactly the same whether you're using the Wheela Cloud or on-premise version. Let's break down the dashboard into three parts. The first part is at the very top where we have our time matrix. Below that we have our various widgets and on the left hand side we have our toolbar where you can choose other monitors, reports, or change settings and preferences. Let's start at the top and look at the functions of the time matrix. Now by default the time matrix shows the last 24 hours. Highlighted or shaded on the right hand side you'll see that the selected range is the last hour. Above the time matrix itself you'll see that you can turn on the real time switch which will continue to progress every minute as we gather data and you will always see the last hour selected. Turning off the real time switch will freeze the time matrix and then you can expand, contract, or move the selected time. You will also see that you can select a specific point in time as well, whether you want to look at a longer period of time, example three days, or maybe go back to a specific point in time where you believe an issue or performance degradation occurred. We consider this the DVR option for our time matrix. Next to the date and time range selector, you'll see an icon to zoom. This will zoom in to the selected time range to give you a closer look at the minute by minute response times and alert conditions. Now this is a good time to talk about what makes up the time matrix. As you can see, when we zoom in, we have little blocks that are made up of rows and columns. The columns represent each minute that we're collecting data. The rows correspond to the headings on the right hand side of the Titan matrix, with the top row being application response, followed by CPU, memory, storage, and networking respectively. Now that we've selected this particular time range, all of our widgets will display alert conditions accordingly. If we move the time slider, the bottom 80% of the screen will adjust to display the conditions for that new time period. Now that we know how the time matrix works, let's look at the widgets below and learn what options we have and how to navigate through them to find performance issues in our infrastructure. There are many widgets available to you and each person can create a dashboard that is all their own and they can focus on what's important to them. Let's browse each widget and take a closer look at its capabilities. We'll start with the four what we'll call hardware widgets and then move over to application widgets. Let's first talk about what each widget has in common. The first thing you can see is the sunburst which will show us various levels of the infrastructure, overall health score, what percentage of VMs are in critical, major, minor, or normal, as well as the worst in each category. Let's take a look at CPU health as an example. You can see that the sunburst shows us the four layers from the innermost circle being the data center, the next ring for clusters, then hosts, then finally the outermost ring being VMs. You can then see the worst cluster, worst host, and worst VM. Now we could start here by hovering over the circle and finding application issues, but the sunburst is pretty small. So what we can do is click on the maximize button designated by the double diagonal arrows. Now we can more clearly see our sunburst as well as a detailed chart of all the VMs on the right hand side. You can also select to view your hosts or clusters as well. Staying on the VMs, you can see an alphabetical listing of all the VMs we have in our infrastructure. If you want, you can sort by any of the columns you see in the chart. Often you'll want to start sorting by the health column. Health scores are calculated by various criteria including application response time and best practices from the likes of VMware, Microsoft, and others. Just know that the lower the health score, the worse your server could be performing. 
When selected on CPU, you will see the other columns available are application response time, CPU percentage, megahertz, and CPU ready. CPU ready is one column you certainly want to keep an eye on due to the possibility of adversely affecting your server and application performance. Hovering over a specific VM will show us the applications that are running on that server. Single clicking on that server will lock in what we call a tool tip. From here we can see the application health, the response time, the number of transactions per minute, and traffic per second. If you want to diagnose why a particular application is showing red, orange, or yellow, simply click on that application to open the root cause window. The root cause screen will hone in on a 30 minute window, which can be moved forward and backward in time and made smaller but not larger. Here we will see the application response time designated by vertical lines at the top. A dark blue baseline horizontal line and the number of transactions just below displayed as vertical white lines. You will also see the start and end time of this 30 minute window along with the minimum and maximum response times. The next thing you'll see just below are three boxes showing CPU, memory, and storage and the probability each one is for being the root cause of slow application response times measured in percentage. Often below these three boxes you will also show any dependent services and servers they run on along with the health of that server and the health of the network between the server we selected and the dependent server. Toward the bottom you will see the worst transactions showing the response times, the client making the request, and the server from which we expect to reply. It will tell us the application, aka service, request and reply. Please note we do not gather any personal information during this request and reply so there's no security risk or breach of data security. In the case where CPU is the highest probability of being the root cause, when we click on the CPU box shaded in yellow, orange, or red, this will show us the summary, again, and notable links to VMware knowledge base articles regarding the issue. But most importantly, it will begin to show us the CPU ready, CPU usage, percentage, and megahertz for the VM, as well as across the host it lives on and the cluster that the host resides in as well. It's important to know if the issue is in fact a particular VM or maybe another VM that's causing this server to be a victim. In order to show the correlation between multiple servers running on a host, simply click on the host for one of those three criteria. Now that we know how to get to our root cause, let's go back to our main dashboard and look at the next widget. But before we restore this back to its original size, notice that there's a little checkbox that allows you to choose the color of this particular widget. This could be useful if you want to quickly identify which widget you're looking at on the dashboard. Let's move over to our memory widget, maximize it, and look at the sunburst and chart options. Much like the CPU widget, we will see the option to select host and cluster at the top of our chart. In this case, let's drill down to a specific host which may have multiple VMs that are showing issues. On my sunburst, I will click once on the host and select Drill Down, Zoom In. Now notice that the VMs on the chart on the right have been reduced to just the VMs that live on that particular host. For memory, we can see the usage percentage, active memory, and CPU swap wait time. As we saw with CPU, we can hover over a VM and see the services that run on the server. And if we click on any of those services, we can drill down to the root cause of performance issue. Again, if we find that memory has the highest probability of being the root cause, you can click on memory and see usage, active, and swap wait for the VM, host, and cluster. Moving over to look at our network widget, you're becoming familiar with the maximized widget view. Network will show the application response time as well as network response time, along with fatal retries, virtual packet drops, and traffic and packets per second. One thing that often comes as a surprise to data center managers and network admins alike is the number of servers that may show virtual packet drop. 
Again, once you go into the root cause view, you will see CPU, memory, and storage, as mentioned previously, and you may see dependent services. In the case where network connectivity between the dependent server and the server you have selected is poor, you can click on the network circle and see the traffic between those two servers. If drop packets was one of the issues, you will also see a few knowledge base articles on how to resolve that, which is actually easier than it seems, but is one of those things that most people had no idea was occurring. The fourth so-called hardware widget has to do with storage. This one looks a little bit different than the other three, however, in that we're looking at the data store, host, and vDisk as opposed to the services. And looking at the VMs in the chart, you will notice that hovering over them does not show applications as the other widgets did. This widget is more informational than anything and shows us read and write latency as well as IOPS. In order to really get in-depth on storage, we will use the storage analysis monitor later in this video. The next widget we can look at is the application performance widget. This widget and the next one we'll talk about, server alarms, are the crux of what makes Wheelie unique. Our ability to correlate your application issues to a specific part of the virtual or physical infrastructure make it invaluable to any data center manager or admin team. This widget shows us our transactions, the traffic and packets, as well as the response time. This is one of the best ways to begin to manage your applications from a performance perspective. Before we go too far into anything else, let's talk about how we envision users getting the most from the solution and resolve issues as quickly as possible. We feel that the best place to start when looking for and resolving issues is by opening and looking at the Application Server Alarms widget. The Server Alarms widget skips to the chase of showing you exactly where the issues lie. Let's look at what we display on this window. The first thing to pay attention to are the blocks on the far left column. There are two sections to this. The first is the big red, orange, or yellow block, which tells us the overall health rating for a particular application, and the second is divided into four smaller blocks. Starting in the top left, we'll see the health of the CPU. The top right shows us health for the memory. The bottom left shows health for storage, and bottom right shows dependent service and sometimes network health. This is a great way to know what the issue is before ever clicking on the alarm to go to the root cause view. Other columns you see, and can sort by, include the VM, the service, application response time, baseline, and even percentage above baseline at the far right. Speaking of baselines, how do we get our baselines? There's several options, but by default we utilize the previous hour along with those best practices I mentioned earlier. We also have the ability to select yesterday, last week, or even a select a custom range. Those options are available in the settings section, which we'll cover in due time. Okay, now we have essentially reviewed the dashboard, and we can move on to the various monitors, and then we can cover reporting and then setting preferences. On the left-hand side, you'll notice there is a toolbar that allows us to select the dashboard, monitor, reporting, settings, preferences. We're going to look at each one of these monitors in depth. You will notice that each monitor corresponds to one of the widgets on the right side. The first monitor we will look at is the application analysis. When we click on the application analysis link, you will see all of the servers in our environment and the lines connecting them to and from dependent services. You will see that you have two options, topology map and dependent services. We will look at the dependent services in a moment. You will also see we can sort by a port group or a vAP. Another selection what we have is to show all names. By default, we'll only show you the most active users. If you have multiple port groups and servers that rely on other servers in a different port group, you'll also notice there are plus and minus signs next to the node distance which allows you to scale the port groups closer together in order to see dependencies. In the main window, you'll notice that you can select the data center, the port group, or even a specific server. Once we see our port group, we can limit our view to only one port group by clicking on the port group circle and choosing to filter. If the display is too small, you can use the scroll mouse 
to zoom in and out. Here we can see all of the servers that live on that port group. Below the name of the VM, you can see all the services that that server provides. One very important part of this is by clicking on one of the servers and seeing those applications that that server provides, we have many options including the ability to add to our dependent service view. Now that we've added the server to the dependent services view, let's click on that tab and see all of the dependent services for that server. Please remember that we're displaying things as they stand for the time window selected at the top. There are occasions where the cause of application performance issues have to do with servers behind the scenes and will show further down the path. From here we can always click on a server and then a service to go to the root cause view. The next monitor we will look at is network analysis. Again the scroll mouse can be used to zoom and we have two tabs available for network analysis as well with the default being flow analysis. Flow analysis shows us the traffic and response time from host to application noted as a classifier as it passes through the vSwitch port group and VM. If you hover over a specific application or service on the right side of the screen you'll see all of the servers that provide that type of service. Clicking one time will lock the tool tip and you can see the servers, the traffic, application response time, network response time, fatal TCP retry, zero window errors, as well as resets. Of course, if we hover over and click on the VM, you will see the applications, which can lead us to the root cause view, but could also help diagnose things even before we get to the root cause view, like seeing that an application response time is long, and yet network response time may be only a few milliseconds. One other option on the flow analysis page is to select where it says DV switch view and change to network switch view. Network switch view will complete the circle by connecting the host traffic through the top of rack switch. You will need to set up SNMP for your top of rack switch in order to get this to display properly and we'll show you how to do this in the settings section. Now we can track the packets from one application on a server living on one host across the top of rack switch and back down to another application on another server which may be on another host. Wheela continues to increase its capabilities in every version and soon will expand the capabilities and reach out to other devices using things like SNMP, WMI, etc. Lastly, if you want to see who is talking to who, you can select on the Network Conversation tab and it will display which servers are talking to others and the amount of traffic that is being sent back and forth. Moving on to the CPU Analysis Monitor, we have many options on how we can view our CPU usage for our infrastructure. The first option by default is our Circle Packing Diagram. To help you understand these circles, let's start at the biggest outer circle, which is the data center. The next inner circle or circles would be clusters. Next would be the host and finally the VMs themselves. Again, the size of the band is representative of the CPU usage and the color, the application response of services running on that particular server. You can also view CPU in a tree format, which does left to right what we see in the nesting circles of the packing drawing. Clicking on a host will allow you to expand to show all of the VMs and the VMs with application response time during the selected time window will be shown by their color code to the right. If all the fancy graphics aren't for you and you just want to see raw numbers you can select the table view and see all of the VMs and their statistics much like we saw when we maximized CPU widget earlier. The final tab shows all of the CPU related alarms and all of the VMs again over the period of time that we have selected at the top and sometimes we see alarms for a particular server where we do not see an application being adversely affected. Looking at the memory analysis monitor we will see the same options we had for CPU so we don't need to belabor the point. Just know you have multiple views and you can always click on a particular service to go to a root cause. Moving on, the next monitor is the storage analysis monitor. Here we can see our data stores on the left and see the host, VMs, and VDisks as we move to the right. By now you probably know what to expect. 
Hovering or clicking on the VM will show the applications and give quick details about read-write latency and IOPS for a particular VM and allows us to select a service to go to the root cause screen should we see an application in yellow, orange, or red state. One thing to note is that you can hover over one of these bars connecting the data store to the host, for example, and it will show you the disk reads and writes. This is true for host to VM and VM to vDisk as well. Of course, we do have the Alarms tab, and you can select to see all storage-related alarms during the selected time period. The final monitor isn't necessarily a monitor, but what we call our Stats Browser. Up to this point, much of the focus has been specifically on a particular application or service running on a VM, but sometimes we want to step back and get a broader view of what's happening. The Stats Browser allows us to look at the VM as a whole, or a cluster, or a host, etc. Remember, however, that the Stats Browser still plays by the same rules as all the other monitors and widgets, and will display information for the period selected above. For this example, I chose a specific VM that I know has some issues, and I want to see if the issues are persistent throughout the day, or only at a specific point in time during that day. I'll start by selecting the VM as the type, and the VM itself in the Name section, then I'll go to the time matrix and expand it so I've selected the entire 24-hour period. Now I can see any and all alarms for that VM during the day, see my application response times for every application that runs on that server all on one page, as well as seeing network, CPU, memory, and storage details. This is a great way to see if the VM itself has issues or if it's just one particular service that's having an issue. Let's move down and talk a little bit about reporting. As we've seen with our widgets and monitors, we limit our time window to 24 hours, and sometimes we want to look at things over a longer length of time, such as weekly or monthly basis, and start building some trending for resource usage or service performance or application response time. We have two options for this report. The first option is to create an on-demand report, which you can create on the fly, or a scheduled report which would be something you'd want to create and have it run automatically on a scheduled basis. In order to create a report, simply click on New Report, choose the type of report, the time frame, and the entity, for example, data center or a specific host. And that's it. A resource usage report will show CPU, memory, network, and storage usage. The application report will show us application response time trending and correlation between resource usage and application response times, and the service report will allow you to see a report focused on a particular service independent of the VM that it runs on. Once the report is created, you can click on the name of the report to open it, and if you'd like, you can click on the arrow button next to the printer and download it as a PDF. As we wrap up this tutorial, let's take a quick look at the various options that are available within the settings. The first tab, that we have is the VST configuration tab. Most likely you've already done this as part of the setup or the network and application widgets and monitors wouldn't be very helpful. But just in case you weren't the one setting everything up, this is where you deploy smart tap VMs to monitor network traffic on the vSwitch of a specific host. The next tab is the alarm configuration which allows us to change our baseline values as well as set up SMTP notifications for various levels of alarms. Next is the Software Update tab, which is useful to know if you're always on the latest version, which we strongly suggest, as I mentioned earlier, due to the fact that we strive to constantly increase capabilities in our application with every new release. The SNMP configuration tab is next, and it's a very important one to pay attention to in order to close the gap that may exist when data travels between hosts. As we talked about earlier, adding SNMP for a top-of-rack switch allows us to see when data leaves and enters host to give us a better picture of end-to-end -end traffic. The global configuration will assist you in setting up your email server, so the alarm notifications that you choose in the alarm config page will work. Be sure to set up your mail server and credentials, or no alarm emails will be sent. And yes, that's a bad thing. Finally, accounts management 
is available if you'd like to create an additional read-only login for another member of the organization. They will be able to do and see everything we've done up to this point without the setting tabs being available. If you're able to see any of this, then the VIC VIC installation tab can be ignored as it's only part of the initial deployment. Last but not least, we do have a Preferences tab which allows you to set your native language as well as the graphical skin. The Dashboard Configuration tab shows you a few additional widgets that can be added to your dashboard including two for application performance in a heat map style view and a video helper window which allows you to see quick two minute videos on how to accomplish certain tasks within the tool. Most of those were covered during this tutorial. Please note that we have a full screen option if you'd like to display a specific widget or monitor in real time on a monitor or a video wall in a knock, for example. And there's a quick help pop-up to get a better grasp of health scores, etc. I hope you've learned a lot in this tutorial and now have a great grasp on how Wheela helps data center managers keep their applications and infrastructures running at peak efficiency. Mm -hmm.